Brad Underwood said after the game, Andre Curbelo looked like Bello. And I, you don't want to like say, yep, we're going to have that the rest of the year. But even Andre after the game was saying, that's as good as I felt in a really long time. He just looked comfortable. He looked confident. And he seems to, he was talking a lot about accepting his role, Mike, which is, hey, if I got to play defense for this team now and Trent's the lead guy, that's fine. Uh, if, if I got to go get some buckets and, and be a run killer, like he shifted the momentum in that second half several times with some of these dribble drives. Kofi had a beautiful seal to get him an easy layup where he just kind of laid it up and held it there. Um, that that's, that's a dangerous weapon and, and other opponents got to be like, dang it. Now that guy's back. That's going to be tough to defend. I, I debated tweeting this during the game. It gets to the point when he has those games where he looks like Bello again, where you think as an opponent, it's like, this is, a, you got this guy coming off the bench. Like that's unfair, man. And, and I think. Potentially the best point guard in the big 10 is coming off the bench. Yeah. When he's, yeah. When he's right. I, I think he's the way he controls the game. And then now the element that he's adding defensively, he's, he's up, he's right there. That's for sure. And look, I, I think, like I said, he had one of his best defensive performances of his career and, his rotations, his awareness. I talked about fighting through screens. It, it, I'll show the clip in the film review. The defense he played at the end of the first half on Devontae Jones, getting through screens, walling him off, and forcing Devontae Jones into a 12-foot fadeaway air ball. Uh, that's the type of stuff that's going to continue to get you minutes. And look, 84-80, right? He makes a rotation and, and goes vertical. I know they call it Mozgoffing, uh, you know, on Caleb Houston there. It won the game. They won the game. And if Caleb Houston dunks that, you know, if it's an and one somehow, now you're talking about 84, 83, 84, 82. And then, you know, Jake misses the shot. If Coleman doesn't track it down, that's why it was cool. You know, Coleman and Bello back-to-back plays kind of sealed it for them. And, I'm not mentioning Kofi. I'm not mentioning Trent. You know, I'm not mentioning Plummer. It's these, it's these other two guys that I thought played a big hand in that. And look, I, I think it's that for Corbello, it's that defense and rebounding. When It's like, hey, listen to the coach, right? Coach says, well, we're going to need some defense and rebounding down the stretch. And if Andre Corbello is the guy, as you saw yesterday, defending like that and being able to rebound like that, you're going to see a little bit more of Andre Corbello. I, and, and I think, you know, some of that too is just, that defense and rebounding, it's going to increase his minutes. And then if he continues to look settled on the offensive end, like we talked about, uh, he won't be coming out much. He, he won't. So whose minutes is that going to chew into? And I think you can probably do the math on it. But look, I understand four turnovers yesterday. One was a carry, which I think you could arguably call a lot of times down. They should have called one on Devontae Jones and I, in, in the first half, and, and Brad Underwood wanted it. The other one was – Frankie Collins raked his arm as he was going up for a layup. Ball flies out of bounds. The third one was Jacob Grandison just tossing the ball to him with two seconds left in the shot clock. He tries to go make a dribble move and gets the ball taken. And the last one was the worst one. It was just, it was, he tried this post entry pass, kind of like he did it with Marquette at Marquette with Omar Payne. Like I'm going to slide the ball into Kofi, gets picked off, but this is the difference. Okay, and I know you think I know you know I'm about what to say right now, or what I'm about to say right now. Turns it over. Okay. The very next defensive possession was the charge that he took on Hunter Dickinson. That was the very next one off of just an insane read and rotation. Wasn't worried about the turnover, didn't dwell on it. And that's and you can you can talk about the defense, the rebounding, the maestro and ball screens. That is how you know that Andre Curbelo. Is, is really turning the corner. Because you know, Mike, early in the season, we were talking about it, all the film rooms, like one mistake. He was worried about the refs not calling something compounded to another mistake. Last couple of games, man, uh, actually, since he's really come back, like remember what was the Wisconsin game? You know, he had a, a bad play turnover, comes back, steals the ball. Like he's just, he's, he's locked in. Uh, and, and then he's confident in offense and it could change his team, right? I mean, we've been waiting for it, waiting for it. And Brad Underwood's been patient and he hasn't been putting too much pressure on him. And it seems like uh, they're feeling good right now, heading into March 1st tomorrow. So I think that's working well for him.
I mean, they should be. I, I think you, you could yesterday, the, the 93 points that they scored. I mean, it's not like they hit 16 threes, right? I mean, a lot of it was just, you know, Granison back cut, Coleman hits them for a layup. I mean, they're playing. And I thought the blend, the blend was what the difference was. Yeah. Uh, and oftentimes you talk about the dry spells and the stagnation. Part of that comes from running the same thing. We're going to throw it into Kobe every single time. And when that doesn't work and when guys aren't in a rhythm, hello, dry spell, right? And when you blend it like they did yesterday, three-point shooting, pistol action, high ball screen. Now you're worried about the three-point shooting. So now we're going to go to Kofi. And now you're just – you're glued to your men. And it's Kofi on an island down there with, with Johns or with Dickinson – and we know Dickinson doesn't want to foul, so it's it's still a good one-on-one matchup. And and I just thought the way that they blended that, I it's almost like they used – at times it's like, we want to throw it in the Kofi to start the game. Throw it in the Kofi. Great. And they did that a couple of times. But it's almost even better when, you, when you've gone away from it because you're bringing him up in the ball screens. To use Co- – throwing it into Kofi is like, we're dropping the anvil right now that's almost an even better way to use it at times. And I thought, here's the thing with Kofi, and this is why I think sometimes he looks tired out there, is when you throw the ball in for a guy to back his man down 40 times in a game, that's going to wear on a dude. And if if you're Kofi, let's try to find him some easier looks. And some easier looks are just off those ball screens where he gets a free run at the basket, catch, finish. He doesn't have to be the one who receives the ball. Trent gets downhill puts it up on the rim. Like we talk about Trent needing to do more, puts it up on the rim. Dickinson has to go help, has to go contest. Kofi gets a free run, offensive rebound, layup. Those are much more, I guess, easier looks where you don't have to exert yourself so much. And they blended it all together yesterday. And I, if they're going to do it that way, and it may not be in that order, three point shooting, ball screen, throw it into Kofi. But if you go, ball screen, you know, throw it into Kofi, open up the three-point shooting. Like, you play off those three things. What do you do, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, Mike, it's almost like it's 3D now, right? Like, for so long, you're working in this. It's Kofi post-feed, right? And some of those actions really work well. Grandison's a great uh, passer. Um, but Kofi can do that work. Or you just got the Kofi the ball. He kicks it out, right? You do some of this weave action. Maybe you get a three. But now when you had Curbelo, it just – it's that little other dimension that you didn't have without him because Frazier's just not as nimble as him. You know, he's, he's, he's not the same guy. Now he had some great passes to Kofi there, but he's just not as good at it. I mean, there's very few guys who are as good as Andre Corbello. So it's now it's like a 3d offense where it's, you're playing 3d chess instead of, you know, like it's, it's really a handful for a defense. And as Brad said, Yesterday, it's it's pick your poison, but now it's not just shooting and Kofi. It's shooting Kofi and a dribble drive. Yeah, and Hunter Dickinson yesterday in in the ball screen coverage was funny when when Curbelo got his layup, and it was almost like the one where he kind of like spun it and did a little put a little I guess jelly as you would say on it, um, jelly on the roll. It's it's funny watching it because Curbelo's so good at the initial setup of the ball screen. Trent's gotten so much better at it too. Like, I'm going to make sure you run into the screen. And the second you run into that screen, immediate advantage for me, dribbling down as the ball handler. Corbello runs this guy into the screen and comes off. And literally, I, it's, it's the gravity of Kofi Coburn. I, it's, he, Connor Dickinson literally gave Corbello a wide open layup. Because the second Corbello came off and Kofi rolled, Dickinson was so concerned with Kofi that he literally just ran over and chested him. And Corbello... Corbello had a layup line layup. And that's all just, it's all those parts working together. And the last point I'll make about Kofi and the ball screens, and you don't want to get too ball screen happy, but I think it's great when Kofi is setting them and not bailing out early and not just steadily slipping out all the time. It's the ripple effect, right? He sets the screen, he lays wood. Now Dickinson, Johns, whoever's in ball screen coverage, Dickinson didn't do it on that one. But you have to stay in front of the ball. So now Devon, you know, Devontae Jones has to chase over. He's behind the play. And Trent Frazier, smart, fifth-year senior. I know Kofi just laid wood. I know you think you're behind. I know you think you have to fight over. I am putting on the brakes and shooting it, and you are running into me. 
Like that is just a game that you can play. And, and, and I think that's part of the reason why they, they had 93 points yesterday and it looked pretty damn easy to be yeah. honest. Yeah.